Today marks one year since the October 7th Hamas attack on Israel. It marked the deadliest day in that country's history since the Holocaust, and it claimed the lives of more than 1,200 men, women, and children. The massacre sparked a devastating war in Gaza. More than 40,000 Palestinians have died, millions more displaced. NBC's Bree Jackson is in Washington now with details. Somber ceremonies marking one year since Hamas launched a brutal attack against Israel, killing more than 1,200 people, another 250 abducted. Mourners gathering at the site of the music festival where it happened. The fate of nearly 100 hostages remains unclear. Loved ones pleading to bring them home. We don't feel there's a sense of urgency, and that's extremely upsetting, disappointing, and angering, really. President Biden and the First Lady marking the one-year anniversary with a candle lighting at the White House. Across the globe, there is mixed reaction to the ongoing war. Israel's response has sparked criticism, including passionate protest over the mounting death toll in Gaza. Vice President Harris honoring the lives lost and facing pressure over support for Israel, despite Prime Minister Netanyahu defying the administration's push for a ceasefire. When we think about the threat that Hamas, Hezbollah presents, um, Iran, um, I think that it is without any question our imperative to do what we can to allow Israel to defend itself. Further raising concerns, the Israeli military has stepped up strikes in southern Lebanon and is vowing to retaliate against an Iranian missile strike last week. Former President Trump argues Israel is entitled to do so. And nobody will be upset if they attack because they're entitled because Iran hit them with 187 missiles. 12 months later, the Israel-Hamas war rages on with no end in sight. Israel's defense minister is scheduled to meet with Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin on Wednesday. That marks the third visit to the U.S. since that war started one year ago.